Okay, cool. So, uh, first of all, someone asked you, uh, what tracker are you using for these for pops? So I use volume. Classic. Yeah. Uh, yeah we, the, two, the two main ones, I think, a lot of people are using Funnel Flux. I haven't tried it. Uh, I started with volume, and it's what I'm I'm comfortable with. But I believe Funnel Flux and volume are the two that basically everyone's using. Yeah, so uh, we and we show both in the six week AMC. So uh, Funnel Flux is an iStack company, um, so there's a really good, uh, I think, uh, a discount associated with it uh, when you take the course. But um, but yeah, so but both Funnel Flux and Volume are things that we teach. So that's one of the questions here. Uh, feel free to fire your questions over to us. This is one that's interesting. This was asked right off the beginning, and it's something uh, we haven't really talked about. The Google Chrome uh, built-in ad blocker, do you feel that that could really strongly affect uh, this? Or, but, but that's going to be mainly on desktop, I think, right? Yeah, so there's, I mean, ad blockers are constantly coming out. Uh, specifically, there has been nothing that has really hindered mobile yet. Um, they Actually, these pop-up networks, as the ad blockers get more sophisticated, there's an option in some of them to get around it. And so you can pick, I only want the, tr the traffic that people don't have ad blockers, or I just want you to, to trick the ad blocker and still get the pop-up. Cool. Uh, we have Mohammed Hassan asking, what do you mean by WL? I think you covered that, but what, what is the, the, the acronym for WL? Oh, whitelist. So white the, yeah, those are the, if you get really good IDs, we call it a whitelist. So you take only the best IDs, which are the websites, and you make a whitelist, and then you can bid even higher because if it's converting really well for you, it's probably converting really well for others, and you're going to have to pay a little bit more for it. Okay, cool. Um, can someone share the replay later? Yeah, we will be sharing the replay later, but you want to stick around till the end here uh, because we have some really cool uh, giveaways and some other exciting things here. Um, will Joshua be a trainer in the six-week course? We can say 100% Joshua will be a, a trainer in the six-week course along with uh, four other TAs as well who've been, this is Joshua's first uh, six-week AMC. The other guys have been around for at least, I think, two of the other six-week AMCs, but we're super excited to have some, uh, some fresh blood in the course. And obviously, you can see from this presentation that uh, Joshua really knows what he's talking about, so I'm super excited. Nice presentation, says Roger. Nice. Well, yeah, I totally agree. Angela and I are sitting here talking on Slack here about how good this presentation has been. So well done, Joshua. You use Prime Spot. I think that's a question or a statement. What do you do? You use Prime Spot. Do you know what Prime Spot is? I'm not sure. Yeah. So it's up here. Uh, you can still see my screen, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So Prime Spot is up here. So you can pick all traffic, Prime Spot only, and uh, I've tested this. Um, I, I usually just stick with all traffic. So it says right here, prime spot bidding occurs when a visitor hasn't gotten a pop app pop up in the last hour. So basically, the idea behind this is this person hasn't been inundated with pop ups yet. You're welcome to test it. I just go all traffic. Uh, you're going to get less traffic with prime spot, and it hasn't been a huge difference. It's not that I would bid a lot more for the prime spot traffic, but again, don't take my word for it. You should always test everything yourself. Cool. Wow, there's a lot of questions here. Let's. We're going to answer a few more of them, and then Joshua, if you can, uh, while we're while Nelson is doing his presentation, if you can go in and answer um, some of them just by text, uh, just because we probably won't get to all of them here because we're already at an hour here, and we we only have an hour and a half. Um, okay. So uh, let's just see if we can answer a couple more here. Uh, but, but, but he says, can you go over the bid raising on IDs one more time? Uh, we're going to have to save that for the course. Uh, Joshua is going to be in the course, and uh, he can, you know, he, he can he can give all that information away in the course. Uh, so let's see. Any other verticals that you can recommend? I know. Um, so it sweeps. Uh, some people still run antivirus. Is that something that's still happening? Yeah. So the main ones for for pops are basically running sweeps. Uh, if Depending on your traffic source, I mean, you can run some more niche stuff, but you really have to be on like like for for games, you really have to be on like a game type uh, traffic source. And then the other one is is antivirus, uh, and it it can be successful in um, in pops also. Those are the two main ones: sweeps and antivirus. 
Cool. Uh, how much budget do you need to get started? We say in the course, for to, to cover your course, at the bare minimum, um, to, to be testing both POPs, because the 6BKMC is not just POPs, it's also, you can do redirects and display, but what ends up happening is people end up really, what, what we find that people have, people end up focusing mainly on POPs, just because it's the, it's the lowest hanging fruit. Mobile display is, is a tricky one right now. Um, some people jump onto the mobile display, but a lot of people end up staying with POPs. We say around $2,000 is what you're looking at for a budget. What do you suggest uh, getting started on POPs with, uh, what, what kind of budget do you recommend? Yeah, so if you're, if you're smart about it, uh, then uh, depend, well, is this including everything, like all your spy tools, your volume, like everything? It's basically, we, we say about 2000 for traffic and then another like, you know, three or 400 probably for your subscriptions. Okay. Yeah. So to, if you spent $2,000 on, on traffic, I think you'd, you'd be okay. The, the one thing that, uh, that comes into play is it's a long time between you making profit in volume and you actually seeing the money. So everything I ran this month, I don't get paid until the 15th of next month. So it'd be nice if you had something profitable, if in that scenario, you could come up with enough cash to keep running it. But running $2,000 of, of actual traffic with the help from us, I mean, you could be well on your way. Yeah, awesome. There's a lot of positive comments in here, man. There's a lot of people that really like this presentation, so that's really awesome. Uh, one of the things that I see mentioned a couple times is how long do your successful campaigns last? I think that's an interesting one. Yeah, so I, so as as I said when I'm ripping landers, so I run, I run, I mean, essentially what you would consider white hat. I don't have to cloak, like I, I run what the advertiser wants. So my campaigns run a long time. I'm there, I don't get in trouble with traffic sources. Uh, which is one of the main reasons why campaigns die is you do you know you're doing something where you want oh I want I want higher ROI but then as soon as you get caught it stops I can run for oof, my longest running campaign might be four months right now and it's still going strong crazy nice um, why would I say mobile display is tricky I would like we I, I would like someone, maybe Kevin, if, you, if maybe you're running mobile display, maybe it isn't as tricky as I think. I worked at a mobile display company before uh, iStack, I was at GoToMobi, and I know it's just more expensive. I know that the, the, a lot of times, you know, a lot of the business that happens uh, on, on DSPs is brand inventory, and brands pay ridiculous amounts for their uh, impressions and clicks. And especially, you know, and so that can really drive up the cost for performance advertisers as well. I know that there are people still making mobile display work, but the, the, the reason I would say it's tricky is A, it can be expensive, more expensive. B, um, it's, it, there's just that whole other element of having to have a creative. You have to come up with not only a great landing page, but you also have to have a very small, usually, uh, creative that drives people to actually click. And the click is, uh, often the most tricky part about uh, about getting these things to happen, uh, you know, getting people to engage with your ads, uh, and compliance is a constant issue. The compliance on mobile display is a lot uh, stronger than it is on pops, um, so that's probably why I would say that mobile display is tricky. Have you ever experimented with mobile display, Josh? Yeah, I was trying to highlight it over here. So it, it's the reason it's going to cost you a lot more. I know it's like so bad I couldn't get the right color, but is it, you're adding another variable, so. If you start testing on mobile display, let's say you were doing whatever you're doing, you don't know if the offer is good and you have a landing page, you don't know if the landing page is good, and you also don't know if the banner is good. Like you're just adding one more level. If you already ran something on Pops and you know the offer is good and you know the landing page is good, then the only extra thing is, oh, well, is this banner good? Is this traffic good? You're kind of just adding that, that extra layer. I've, I've run and I still run on, on banners. Uh, it it works for for pops, but like I said, I recommend you you try and zero in first and then add uh, the the banner display after. And actually, I've had quite a lot of success uh, on a few of them. I go to Moby used to be my number one money maker last year. Oh, nice. Yeah. Awesome, Victoria. Represent. Uh, well, they're also on the course. They've offered a, an, another great. Uh, price matching bonus for people on the course, which we're gonna go over in a little bit. We, uh, so uh, Josh is gonna go through and answer 
uh, these ones when he can. There's a lot of really good questions on here. So, so he'll go through and answer a little bit more. Uh, where are you hosting the landers? That's something that we'll cover again in the course. We have great bonuses for um, some of these hosting companies. Uh, I think that's probably good. I think it's probably time. There's, uh, do you only run on mobile pop or, or desktop pop? We talked about that earlier. He's right now about 90 uh, 90% mobile, 10% desktop. Desktop, as we've sent, as we've mentioned, will be affected a little bit more by these Chrome uh, changes that are coming up, and uh, and so mobile pops is where where a lot of this hay is made. 